Hi, in this video we're going to show you how to lay wood flooring. There are loads of different types of this kind of flooring, so make sure you follow the pack guidelines when laying your specific floor. Fitting a wood floor can really improve the look of a room, but if you've been putting it off because you thought it was too tricky, then stick around and we'll show you just how simple it can be. And even if you've done it before, we've got lots of handy tips for you to save time, money and bruises. Make sure you've watched our preparation and underlay video before laying your wood floor and you'll be ready to start laying your first board. A handy tip at this stage is to make sure you let the wood packs sit in the room for at least 72 hours so they can acclimatise to the temperature in the room. To lay your flooring, you're going to need some basic tools. A floors to go fitting kit has all you need to lay your flooring. Otherwise, you'll need a pencil, a tape measure, safety goggles, a set square, tension straps, wood glue, a dust mask, spacers, knee pads, a pull bar, a tapping block, a hammer, a drill, wooden drill bits, and either a saw or a jigsaw, depending on how you're going to cut the flooring. Right, we're good to go, so let's start fitting. Get your first piece out and check it over. It's a good idea to do this for every piece as you go. You'll see that one side has a tongue and the other a groove. Lay it down, working from the left-hand corner of the room with the tongue facing the wall. Now for the spaces. Use about two for every piece of wood. These will make sure there's an adequate gap around the floor for it to expand and contract. We're going to work across in rows, but never in columns. So now take another piece and with the glue, run a line inside the groove and attach it to the first. Use the tapping block and hammer to get the two boards nice and snug. Easy. Now for row two. Because we began row one with a full piece, we don't want to do the same for this row because the joins will match up, creating weak spots and the pattern can look wrong. So the best way is to cut the first board of row two two thirds the length of a full board. Just like this. Now, to cut your first piece, you can either use a handsaw, a jigsaw or a circular saw. If you're going to cut with a handsaw or jigsaw, make sure you draw a line straight down the board so you get a perfectly squared edge. You can use a set square for this. Line the board and the blade up correctly and, moving away from you, cut through the board. Don't worry too much about having a rough edge to the end. Your skirting or scotia will cover this. Take your cut piece and run a line of glue inside the groove and slide into place. With the tapping block and hammer, knock rows one and two together, making sure they're tight. Next, get a full length piece and run a line of glue along the length and on the end. Put into place, remembering to tap the board tight to the other boards. In order to keep the boards nice and tight when the glue is drying, you'll need to use tension straps. These are easy to use and will stop any gaps appearing between the boards. Attach one of the metal clasps between the board and the wall and the other clasp to the opposite side and ratchet the straps tight. You can keep laying your floor as usual, just remember to keep readjusting the tension straps as you go. For the third row, cut the board to a third of the length of a full board to give you nicely staggered joints. Remember to glue the groove, tap in with the tapping block and readjust the tension straps. Continue like this until you get to the end of the row and can't lay another full piece down. Take a new board, turn it around and lay it in front of the first row and mark where the two meet with a pencil. Cut the board on the mark, glue and put into place. A tapping block won't work at this end as the board is too close to the wall, so for this part you'll need your pull bar. Insert the bar between the wall and the end of the board you've just put in and tap the pull bar with a hammer. This will pull the two boards together. When this board is in place, keep working away from left to right, staggering the joints in thirds as you go. If you save your offcuts, these can come in handy for this. So now we get to the last row on this wall. To make things a little trickier, there's a radiator as well. Put the board you want to fit into position, then slide it back onto the last completed row. 
Then with a piece of offcut, place it on top of your board and against the wall or skirting. Draw a line on the board you want to fit, remembering to leave about a centimetre for the expansion gap. To cut around a radiator pipe, place your offcut in front of the pipe and mark on the top of your board. This mark is where the pipe will come to. Then move your board close to the pipe and draw a circle slightly bigger than the pipe itself and now you're ready to cut. Drill a hole through the top of the board to the same size you drew the circle. Then with the jigsaw, cut down the length of the board. Flip the board over and draw lines at an angle to the edges of the drilled hole. Cut along these lines with the jigsaw, remembering to keep the piece you cut out. Now glue and lay the board into place and it should fit perfectly. Insert the pull bar between the wall and the end of the board and tap the pull bar with a hammer to pull the boards together. With the piece you cut out, put this behind the pipe so it fits snugly. Continue along the row until your floor is complete. So that's it. All you need to do now is watch our How to Fit Skirting in Scotia video to find out how to finish it all off. Oh, and before you go, here's a very handy tip for getting around door frames. Get an offcut of the flooring and lay it flat on the floor next to the door surround. Lay a handsaw onto the piece of flooring and cut horizontally into the door surround until you can chisel it out. Alternatively, you can use an electric chisel, which is a lot easier. This technique gives you a great finish around doors.